So hi, I'm Anisia Palmer from Fifth Nine, here with Michelle Chibonga from the British Blockchain Association at London Fintech Week. So Michelle, hi. Um, throughout Fintech Week, we've been listening to lots of women speak on blockchain and finance and fintechs in general, mm. but there are still fewer women than men. Why do you think this is? Uh, I think it's partly, like I was saying in the session earlier on, it's partly... Um, you know, about uh, presenting role models, you know, like myself, who are involved in uh, in technology and really encouraging more women to take part, um, you know, and also very much looking into, because a lot of women do have the skills. It's not a matter of, you know, they don't have the skills, but I think it's very much about encouraging, you know, role models to come in and, um, you know, take part and also be almost opening up the doors, as I was saying, on, you know, m making it a little bit more welcoming and inclusive, looking at culture, uh, within um, the sector is absolutely important and key as well because you know if the culture doesn't feel right I think a lot of women might not necessarily be so drawn to going into that industry or that sector so I think it's really important that we set the right culture and where we are quite open and um, welcoming and, and certainly tapping into like I was saying earlier on in, in countries like Kenya, Ethiopia, Nigeria you know and in Asia as well you, you have a lot of women who are engaged in this space but are almost not visible mm -hmm. you know and because they are not visible it almost looks like there isn't you know participation from the women so yeah. i think they do have to, we have to encourage uh, that visibility and encouraging more women to actually come out and be proud of the, the work that they are doing because they are doing phenomenal work uh, as it was said in there i think if, you, if you're investing in women you are actually investing in nations and, and, and sustainable development so absolutely key thank you um what do you think the most challenging um, project that you're currently working on in blockchain is? Sure. Um, so, I mean, I work at the University of Surrey and I'm looking at, for example, educational programs to support both, uh, you know, businesses and enterprise, but also looking at more widely at government as well. So I think in terms of challenges, uh, you know, one of the biggest challenges I think we have in this space, in the blockchain space, is about, you know, educating. Uh, people so that they actually understand number one yeah. what it what is it you know how can we use it to our ad, to advantage but how can we also use it to look at the social good and social impact as I was talking about earlier on so it's very much around education and the challenge is very much and this challenge is global you know how do we ensure that we are educating you know also the end users not necessarily just people within the blockchain space mm -hmm. who might have a little bit of understanding but very much educating in terms of educating our leaders, uh, government in terms of you know some of the policy frameworks they've got in place and how that influences and affects um, you know and how they can tap on technology to actually help address things like you know uh, transparency gaps, uh, you know trust issues that we have, mm -hmm. independence. So I think it's so important that we do the education so that people do actually understand. And as I said earlier on, it will help with the adoption you know, with a quick adoption and with more scalable solutions that we can actually use. Because at the minute, we don't necessarily have, you know, scalable solutions that we can actually tap on to address some of the challenges. And I think that's a challenge that I put out to the world. Mm -hmm. uh, even, you know, I'm sure there are developers out there who are, who are, you know, sort of busy trying to find the scalable solutions that mm -hmm. we can all adopt. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so regarding Europe, are you encountering many obstacles to shape and communicate policy directions? Uh, I think not just Europe, but more because I, I do sort of, you know, look at global markets, mm -hmm. but I think everywhere there are different challenges in different regions. Uh, you know, certainly, as you've heard in there, there's a lot of discussion around regulation, uh, for example, which applies in all regions. It doesn't matter where you are. It's very important that we start to, to look at regulation in this market. But I am not at all advocating for sort of heavy regulation. I think you have to have very balanced regulation mm -hmm. because you don't want to stifle innovation. Of you know, course, because yeah. if you are going to go and heavily regulate, then you are pushing away the innovators. And the innovators, I think, you know, uh, especially in this space, are, are the ones that are going to provide the solutions that we can tap on for scalable, you know, solutions that we can use to address things like the SDGs, you know, to address things like, um, uh, you know, financial inclusion, which we talked about earlier on. And the importance of that, I think, is really, really key. Yeah. So would you say it's more of a bottom-up process then? I, th I think it's, it, it, it partly is. I think we, we are moving away from, you know, sort of top down yeah. in a lot of things. Mm -hmm. and, and it's important that we include, um, you know, like I was saying, you know, the, the very sort of vulnerable groups as well. Mm -hmm. We include people who are almost left behind in society, you know, and, and one of those categories are also women, uh, women, young people and children who don't necessarily always, um, you know, get the voice. So I yeah. think it's really important that we're a little bit more inclusive and we actually design our policies slightly from looking at it from 
not necessarily just the top down where governments are setting policies, but really sort of you know um, consulting with the communities, with the with the you know village leaders and, mm -hmm. and and people who are engaged with the communities, who can have influence, who can set direction and leadership in these communities. I think it's fundamental to include those groups, and we haven't done so previously. And I, I actually think with blockchain, there's opportunity to do that, mm -hmm. you know, in a transparent manner, in a slightly more secure manner. So, uh, you know, all the benefits that you have with blockchain, um, you know, sort of helps with a lot of uh, moving away from the centralized, you know, uh, mm -hmm. to really sort of decentralizing and, and, and allowing everybody to kind of have a say, which I think is quite exciting. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so Thank much you. for your time.